Hello, welcome back to Bamboo Batu. Today we're going to talk about bamboo for land restoration. One more way that bamboo can help heal the planet. This is going to be land restoration in six easy steps. There might be more steps involved to restoring the land of the earth, but we're going to try to simplify matters with six easy steps of a land restoration project. Uh, there's lots of different reasons why land restoration is necessary, especially in this day and age. Um, one of the most common issues is erosion, a uh, simple matter of erosion. It's been around forever. Uh, the topsoil just gets swept away and, and rains and wind. And there's a lot more of that happening because of climate change. Lots of more unusual weather patterns, bringing more floods than usual, more droughts, uh, dry land, uh, droughts make the, the topsoil more susceptible to being blown away in the wind and eroding the topsoil. So erosion, one major, major issue, uh, deforestation, serious problem, which, uh, we've all heard about, uh, cutting down trees to make paper, to make toilet paper, or just cutting down trees to farm some other type of crop that might be more profitable than just having a forest there. And some parts of the world, they're desperate to get land to farm on. And so the slash and burn agriculture, uh, is, is eating away at our forests, the lungs of the earth. And so that's another situation where the, the land needs to be restored. Forests need to be revived. Uh, pollution, huge problem. Uh, here's a picture of some oil being spilled into the grass and that's going to spoil the land for quite some time can make it un unfarmable. So one more problem where bamboo could come in handy and uh, we'll explain a little later how it helps, but definitely, uh, pollution from, from oil drilling activities, from mining activities, um, uh, other toxic waste, chemical factories, you name it. There's all sorts of pollution in the world. Uh, Google pollution, if you're not familiar with it, but I'm sure you are, uh, climate change, of course, as we mentioned is causing many problems with the earth's weather and the soil, um, causing droughts, causing floods. Uh, you'd think there would be fewer floods if there are fewer, less rain and more droughts, but actually we're getting both extremes. And when there are droughts, the land becomes super dry. And then when the rains do come. Uh, it's easy for the rain just to wash away that topsoil. And so the combination of those two factors is eroding away at the topsoil, making it harder to grow food and making it harder for ecosystems to, to rehabilitate. Um, so bamboo is one great tool to use to restore the land. Bamboo is a great pioneer plant. That means in, in areas where the land has been disturbed or denuded or deforested, bamboo is an excellent plant to come in and get a, an early foothold where other plants won't grow so well. And there's a number of reasons why that is. We go over them in this little infographic here from bamboobatu.com. Uh, first of all, the roots of bamboo are super vigorous and they can really dig into the, dig into the earth and get a really good foothold. And as they do that, they hold the soil together, making it more, uh, more hospitable for other plants to other seedlings to take root. Um, also as they do that, they, they prevent further erosion and they contribute more microorganisms into the soil, making the soil healthier and helping the soil to the, helping the top soil to recover. Uh, you can see the pictures there of the roots creeping along. And they form like a mesh that holds the, that binds the soil together. Very beneficial. Also the leaves that fall from the bamboo, um, will drop and, and help rebuild the topsoil. Those leaves break down and into, um, microorganisms, micro, um, small, small particles that benefit the soil, help build the humus of the soil, um, making it more, more fertile and healthier for other, other seedlings to, to start growing in there. <clears throat> um, also as the roots, as the roots dig in to the soil, they will draw up the water table, 
bringing more moisture up to the surface of the earth, making it more hospitable for other plants to grow. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why, why bamboo is, is great as a pioneer plant. Um, it has, it has lower nutrient needs than a lot of other plants. So it'll survive in, in some of these lower quality soils where other plants and trees would have a harder time surviving. And like I said, the roots, the roots are really tenacious. They just, they just hang on and it's an almost indestructible plant. Uh, that's the great thing about bamboo. So many, many good reasons. And it grows so fast. It, um, you know, a tree would take forever to grow and it might not survive year after year in the low quality soil. Bamboo, if it gets, if it gets established, it'll take off quickly. And as it does, it'll produce more shade for other seedlings to grow. Um, a lot of, you know, a lot of trees, they need some shade in the first years when they're small and tender and sensitive. And then as they grow and mature, then they can grow up into the full sunlight. But in those first, first years, they need more shade. So bamboo is very resilient and it can grow and it can produce shade for other more and more sensitive plants, helping for the full recovery of the ecosystem. Um, so yeah, bamboo, kind of a wonder crop. So let's get into the six steps that we talked about. Step one, if you're going to do some land restoration, um, you want to look at the, uh, you want to assess the land and identify what your problem is that you're facing. Is it erosion? Is it pollution? Is it something else? Uh, landslides? Um, you have to get a good handle on the problem before you can just come in with a solution. Um, step two, if you are going to use bamboo, for restoration, you need to think about other uses for the bamboo besides just planting it and letting it um, bind the topsoil and, and help the recovery of the habitat. You want to think about ways that you're going to use the bamboo later on down the road as you harvest it, because it is a healthier plant when it's when it's harvested. If you just let it run amok, um, then it, it will spread. But the older the older combs will age and deteriorate. And so it makes more sense to, to have a, to have a game plan to use the bamboo as it matures, to use those stalks and those poles, because it does have so much economic value and you can harvest, you know, up to 20, 25% of it each year without, without, um, negatively affecting the health of the plant. It actually makes it more vigorous when you, when you go in and prune it and selectively harvest. So you want to think about other uses for it. Uh, step three is species selection. And this goes hand in hand with, with the, the first two items, the, the problem that you're addressing and the, the, the uses of the bamboo that you want to have later on. So you want to look probably at, at some native species, depending where, where you're located. Um, there will probably be some native species of bamboo. And it's always good to use native plants that are more adapted to the environment and more compatible with other native plants, probably. But bamboo again is pretty resilient and you can bring in other, other species. If you're, if you're farming in Kenya, for example, you can bring in some Asian species and they will, they will do quite well probably. But, um, whether you want to have a timber bamboo, that's giant giant bamboo that's good for building material or some smaller bamboo or bamboo that's good for shoot production to have edible bamboo shoots. Um, lots of different species to consider, lots of different uses to consider. And in the end, you probably want to have a mix of bamboo species anyway. Uh, Monocropping is, is never the best choice. So um, whether you're mixing bamboo with other local species or other varieties of bamboo or, or all of the above, um, it's good to think about the, the size and the uses of, of those bamboo species, lots of factors to consider. So once you get that figured out, it's time to start propagating your bamboo. Here's a nice greenhouse nursery. I believe this photo is from Malawi, a uh, nice bamboo farm down there in the Southern part of Africa. And if you're going to undertake a major land restoration project, you're going to need a lot of bamboo plants. Um, because you're probably talking about some, some serious acreage. Um, so here's a, yeah, here's a greenhouse with lots and lots of bamboo. And as you go and plant it, it will cover many, many hectares. And 
so it'll take it'll take a while to get your propagation going. And usually they propagate you propagate from cuttings, taking cuttings of bamboo. Some nurseries prefer to grow from seed. There's kind of a debate. Um, the seeds, plants grown from seed might be more vigorous. Plants grown from cuttings will be more predictable and uniform because they are like genetic uh, replicas of each other. And so they will have almost exactly identical characteristics. Uh, whereas seeds will have more variation, um, phenotypical variation. Um, just like brothers and sisters are very similar, but they have variation and so it is with seeds. Uh, in any case, you're probably going to want a lot, a lot of bamboo plants. And then as you plant bamboo, your neighbors to see it and say, Hey, bamboo, that's a good idea. I could use that to hold my riverbeds together or plant along the side of my farm to, you know, form a windbreak or all different reasons they could plant bamboo. And then you can start selling, you know, selling some bamboo plants to your neighbors and distributing them throughout the community and become the, the famous bamboo dude of the neighborhood. So propagation, important step, uh, step five planting. Now it's time to think more and uh, more specifically about plant density. How close together do you want to plant your bamboo? And that depends on the, on the overall goal of what you're doing. If you're planting for commercial reasons, or if you're planting just to, to help rebuild the topsoil and make the area more inviting for other native plants to return and recover. Um, if that's the case, you want to leave a little space, obviously, for those other plants to come in. Um, if you're just farming commercially, then um, usually it's, uh, they say, about 200 plants per acre, which is 500 plants, 500 bamboo clumps per hectare. That's a pretty good number. If you get higher density than that, things get pretty crowded and it gets pretty difficult to go in and harvest once the plants get mature. And so in those first years, it might look, it might look pretty sparse, might look pretty thin, but you can plant in between. You can plant some in some annual vegetables and whatnot in between the rows of the small bamboo clumps for the first couple of years. But then after about year three or so, the bamboo is going to be getting taller and, and creating more shade. And so those annual vegetable plants, tomatoes or yams or onions or something, they probably won't do so well um, with intercropping. And so those are all factors to consider when you're looking at plant density. And then finally, step six, and this is something you might want to actually do from, from the beginning, but if it's possible, take samples of the soil and see what, uh, measure the microorganisms, see, see if the plant, see if the topsoil is healthier um, at the end than it was at the beginning. If there was pollution, if there was oil and, and toxic chemicals in the soil, you can measure the presence of those chemicals, see how well the bamboo has, has removed those substances, those toxins from the soil. Um, maybe it has removed certain toxins more quickly or more effectively than others. And, or maybe certain species of bamboo have removed certain toxins faster than other species of bamboo. Um, all this data could be super interesting and there's really not enough data, not enough research in this area. And so any data that could be collected in that, in that regard could be very useful to other bamboo growers and other land restoration projects. So if you are going to embark on a land restoration project involving bamboo, um, yeah, try to keep, try to keep the best data you can. Um, and if you can only keep, you know, so, so data, that's better than, that's still better than no data at all. So, um, keep that data and share it with others so that we can all benefit from learning more about bamboo and its great potential. And from there, just let your bamboo grow and thrive and flourish and harvest it responsibly and sustainably, and hopefully make some nice products, um, earn a responsible income and help make the earth a greener, brighter place. All right. Hope this video has been extremely useful and informative and educational to you. Let us know in the comment section. If there's other topics you want to hear about, please let me know. In the meantime, please share the page, visit bamboobatu.com for more information. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, make Bamboo Batu your new favorite.
and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.